Hello, everyone. Uh, Tim, can we hear you? I hope so. Yes, excellent. All right, so everybody, this is the Ansible Community Meetup. Uh, I will hand over to Carol and Tim, and they'll take it away. All right, Tim, um, do you have the slides? Oh, yes, sorry. I'm <laughs> still getting set up here. Uh, uh, uh. Well, let's see. How about, Carol, you do intros while I figure out what's happening here. OK. So hi, everyone. Welcome to the um, Anspo Community Meetup here at DevConf CZ 2022 Virtual Edition. Um, we have Tim Abno and myself, Carol Chen, here as, um, you know, we're just here to guide and, and um, receive your questions. We'll start off with a short introduction about what we do in the community. And um, I see on chat, we also have Gundalo Barker, who is the uh, engineering manager in the community team, who will help with some of the questions that you might have. So and if, if I might interrupt for just a second, uh, Carol and Tim, we have, we have also posted two poll questions uh, that Carol and Tim have supplied us with. So if everyone in the chat would like to uh, visit the poll tab, uh, you could see those. Thank you so much, Michael. So yes, if you uh, click on the polls, um, there are two questions currently. And um, we'd like to find out uh, where you are in the Enspo user or contributor journey. and which will help us perhaps um, frame the discussions and um, kind of anticipate your questions and, and we can respond accordingly. So please respond uh, to the poll questions when you get a chance. Thank you. Any luck, Tim? Almost, almost <laughs> there, so close. All right, this might be it. Ha ha, how's that? Yes, we see something. Yes, Good. okay. Sorry about that, folks. We were um, uh, just having some uh, AV setup issues here, but we're through it. Okay, great. Um, so uh, let's say did it did. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I, I was working on my. <laughs> My setup here, did I, I need to intro myself? I, I didn't. Uh, yes, hear. please. We, we haven't actually done the introduction. We, I just said welcome. Okay, to everyone. great. Yeah. I'll let you start then. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Carol Chen, and uh, I'm part of the Enspo community team here at Red Hat. So we work mainly with the upstream Enspo community and um, to you know promote and uh, collaborate with the community on you know, contributions, uh, meetups, outreach events, and so on. Uh, you can reach me at carol at redhat.com or uh, on most social channels with the ID Cybat on Twitter, uh, liberal chat, RRC, Matrix, Cybat at matrix.org, um, and so on and so forth. Tim, over to you. Yes. Uh, so I'm Tim Apnell. I'm a, uh, I'm a product manager at Ansible. I'm also uh, self-proclaimed evangelist of Ansible. I've been with the Ansible project for a very long time as a first a contributor. I was a customer at one point, um, a consultant developer, and now product manager. So I've kind of uh, seen it from a lot of seen Ansible from a lot of different sides. So that is me. Right. So, do we want to get into poll questions first, so we know uh, how you know what what our audience is like here? Is that um, from the current responses we have? Actually, oh. if you if you go to the poll tab yep. and you can see the results, um, we have quite a lot of people who have a lot of experience with Ansible, okay. which is great yes. to see. Yeah, forty percent um, with four or more years of user user uh, usage experience. Uh, although there is about almost 20% with less than one year of experience as well. So, okay. And some people are new to Ansible. Welcome. We, you know, appreciate 
you joining us. And for those who have been using Ansbo, you know, we thank you for you know being part of the community for all this time. Well, that's good to know. Um, yes, likewise. Thanks, thanks all for being here. Uh, so what we have today is this is this is a very it's supposed to be a very interactive session, uh, kind of a, a choose your own adventure, if you will. Uh, Carol and I have a few slides here to, to start off to, to talk about some things in the community just for general awareness. And then uh, from there, we, we encourage you all to ask um, questions in, um, in, in the chat, in the Q&A. Um, and um, we'll, Carol and I will do our best to answer those. Uh, and we can actually there. bring people on um, video feed to, to ask the questions as well. Oh, OK, great. Yeah. The Even limit is better. 20, so yeah. <laughs> and also may, perhaps some people to, uh, in my team is here and they could join in and answer as well. Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, just an announcement to chat. If you would like to join, just request uh, to share your video and I will add you to the discussion and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's oh, like that's cool. awesome. Seeing real faces, this is such a weird <laughs> experience. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do here is just uh, I'm going to start a little bit, and and Karen and I are going to go back and forth on a few things. I just put this in here, um, not knowing ahead of time how how uh, new or experienced everyone would be, but I always like to come back to this because it's it's really the principles that Ansible has always been based on and continues to be based on, and the idea of of, of creating something that is both powerful and simple, and finding the balance between those two things and then uh, more um, you know something that's really differentiated us is keeping things agentless so that that there's that low overhead to getting started there's a lot of flexibility and power that allows uh, this architecture to do things like work with um, edge or work with network devices and things like that where you cannot run uh, you don't have a more traditional operating system where you can install Python and all these other things or have a lot a lot of uh, processing power there. So, um, you know, that's that's a, these things I think have really created a really strong foundation for what Ansible was based on and why it's it's uh, grown and has so many use cases and, and such wide adoption. Um, I'll take this one, um, Carol, and then I, I think there's a couple coming up that are you're better sure. suited for here. So. Um, I have a session, well, I have a session tomorrow. We'll, we can go more into depth, but right now, what, what really defines Ansible, particularly in the community space, is the Ansible community package. And this is the uh, open source batteries included distribution of Ansible. And this is something that Ansible was uh, known for from the very beginning. The project always included all the, the, the content, the modules, the plugins, all in one distribution. It didn't need a package manager. You installed Ansible, you got all these modules. Um, it's something I'll talk about tomorrow. That was great. Uh, in the beginning, <clears throat> when I remember I got started, there's like 40, 50, 60 modules. Um, up about a year or two ago, I, I think we, we definitely passed 3,000 and we might have touched on 4,000 modules. So it was getting quite large uh, with, with all the different use cases and, and adoption that we were seeing out there. Uh, this now is what is out there for everyone to use that's just like that in that batteries included model. And uh, this includes the uh, Ansible core engine, the latest stable version, and then a whole lot of modules and plugins. Um, those modules and plugins are, there's the core ones, the ones that you really can't use Ansible without, but then there's also, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds, actually probably thousands, uh, I should say, of community supported Ansible collections of these modules and plugins that uh, are are added to the community package based on this inclusion policy. I, uh, we have a link here and we'll be posting these slides shortly after I finish. we finish here. I'll be doing that, that's on me. Uh, but there's a whole community process for uh, uh, developers that, that, that create their own collections and wanna contribute it to the community package to getting it included in the community package. Uh, this community package has a different versioning scheme than the ones that was traditionally known by Ansible. So before it used to be, you know, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9. The community packages moved to semantic versioning. 
uh, because this community package is now different than the Ansible core engine. They're uh, two separate projects and they're, they, they, they have synchronized timelines for the most part, but um, they, they are independent. So they have their own different versioning and the community packages move to the semantic versioning uh, scheme. So you've probably seen a, a 3.00 and a 4.00, and I believe we're up to 5.2.0. I think we're still at that yes. .0. Yes, we are. Okay. 3.0 is uh, expected next week. So yes, that's the latest. Oh, oh, oh 5.3.0. Okay. For yeah. So, week, yeah. so, so uh, you know, one thing to put out there that I, I know from talking to some people, there's been some confusion is that separation now that there's the core, which is still in the two dot, it's at 2.12. Um, and then the community package, which has its own semantic versioning, and that's moving at like, like a 5.2 and like I said, like Carol just said, a 5.3 is coming. Uh, so the, the 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 community team looked to make a release approximately every six months, roughly speaking. Uh, like I said, it is somewhat synchronized with how the, the core engine is making releases. And this package is uh, available and released to uh, PyPy. Um, other, other means pick it up later, but PyPy is where it goes out first. Um, and that's sort of the official place for a release to drop. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, we can answer them here. But if you want to read them later, uh, there was a, a, a blog post made a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, that covers a lot of the questions to answer of all the changes that went on in how uh, Ansible is packaged for the community and, and distributed and the differences between the core project and, and the community package. All right. So with that, I will turn it over to Carol, something you're directly involved in. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tim. So as Tim has said, um, this change to collections over the past couple of years, um, there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, new new things and uh, new ways, new processes, and just uh, more information that, um, you know, we want to find a way to to make sure that everybody has a. Uh, easy way to keep up to date with uh, all the different changes going on, new new collections coming up, and so on and so forth. So um, I think in April 2020, um, when you know everything was locked down and we couldn't have meetups and uh, in-person events to share a lot of this information, um, we started this uh, the Bullhorn newsletter um, to uh, you know, to share this information uh, more broadly and easily to the community. So um, we started as a, like a once every two weeks thing, and it went on quite uh, regularly uh, with, with content from not just our community team or our Red Hat, but also uh, actually a lot of the content is uh, contributed by the community as well when they update their collections or they, um, you know, add, make some changes to some of the tools that they're using, or even write a blog post about their setup. We share that uh, in the newsletter. We, we want to um, promote uh, all the activities that's going on, not just within um, the community team, but also uh, in, the, in the broader community. And um, I, uh, there's a subscribe link, of course, you'll get in the slides when we share it, but I'll also put it in chat. You can subscribe to it if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. And we are actually moving now to a weekly uh, release for mm -hmm. the newsletter because we are getting the momentum and, and you know, there's just a lot going on, like I said. And uh, you can also check out the archives of all the, the past 40, 44 news. I think I did I release 43 issues. <laughs> I, I just released 43 this morning. So feel free to check it out. And um, there's also information on how to contribute uh, news items if you have any uh, to the bullhorn. So that's it, thanks. Next yeah. slide. Yes, I, I have to say, I always open the bullhorn as soon as I see it in my inbox, because it's the only way to keep up with, there's just so <laughs> much activity now in the community. Um, so I, yeah, I really encourage people to subscribe to that. Um, real quick uh, plug here. Tomorrow, uh, there's another Ansible presentation. Um, I think we'll probably end up covering a little bit of what's in that presentation here, just that's the way the ordering of these events went. But it's going, uh, it's going to be tomorrow, 
at uh, 4.30 um, Central European time. Uh, and it's a half hour presentation on what's new and, and, and ahead for the Ansible community, particularly the all the different projects that are out there, the ones that, that you know a lot of people identify the Ansible core project as what Ansible is and now the, the Ansible community package, but there's a lot more projects going on out there that, that will help uh, both uh, uh, developers and, and also just expand the Ansible ecosystem. So that's uh, what I'll be covering in that presentation tomorrow. So, um, you know, mark your calendars and please stop by. Okay. So, Carol, this is probably a good one for you. Uh, do you want to go over some of these community resources we have? Here yeah, sure. So, uh, the kind of uh, main, uh, I guess, portal page, if you will, um, to, to get get to links to even more of these resources is on ansible.com slash community. You will, you know, uh, get uh, to, to see the, the GitHub repos, the mailing lists, the, um, I'm, I'm, I was just updating the um, links to the matrix rooms that we are having, uh, which is one of the major changes that we, we, we did last year was to support both matrix and IRC for our real-time communications with the community. Um, we have had people comment that uh, there is some kind of a, a learning curve or, or you know, a barrier using IRC for, for a lot of newcomers. So um, we moved um, to Matrix, and um, as you know, because it's a bit more user friendly and it's easier for a lot of people to to uh, sign up, and um, it's also feder uh, federated, so you can uh, have your own uh, Matrix account and join join the Ansible rooms without a problem. And the rooms are also bridged to over to IRC. So for those who want prefer to remain on IRC, that's not a problem either. The, the messages will show up on both um, social networks, uh, chat networks. So uh, if you want to take a get more information, it's in the documentation under communications. And also, of course, there's the uh, community documentation where you can get uh, information on not just the usage of Ansible, but also how to contribute and um, uh, how to develop for Ansible. So most of these uh, links uh, you can find as listed here. Okay. And let's see, um, this is probably another one to keep, keep right. with you, Carol. Okay, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we have several uh, kind of um, new things that we've worked on in the last year or so. One of which is um, uh, actually the, the year before we've had a Catacoda self-paced training, which was quite well received. But last year we had um, this new provider with Instruct. So uh, again, with the link, you can check out some of the self-paced trainings that you can try out. Uh, it's mainly for um, how to contribute to Enspo and uh, you can you know, how to test your collection, how to create a collection, and things like that. I think there are about five trainings you can go through. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you're willing to, to you know, take a further step and contribute, there are information on how you can do that. And there are many, many ways to contribute, contribute, right? It's not just code, which is a major part of things, but also, you know, helping to update documentation, uh, uh, run run meetups, even though most are virtual now, but there are still activities going on in the meetup world. Uh, you know, testing stuff, uh, even you know, writing about your experiences uh, using or contributing to Ansible helps the community. So there's a lot of ways that you can contribute, and uh, we appreciate that a lot. And the inclusion policy uh, link, as as mentioned earlier, is there as well. And steering committee, that's one of the, the new things that we uh, set up last year to kind of um, give more uh, structure and kind of accountability uh, from, for, for, for the kind of the community, right? Um, so that there's a group of people who can help make decisions and make sure that things are being accounted for and um, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the, the, the interest of the community is put ahead 
as the main priority. So if you want to uh, see what's the um, kind of the, the story behind it, as well as who are on the community, that's the link um, to check out. And finally, the new collection reviews is uh, part of the inclusion policy when, when you want your collections to be included. Uh, there's a process and um, how, 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 what you need to, to include to be able to get it for, 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 for review to, to, to be included in the next release of Ansible. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and um, we, we hope to get your answers to that. Great. So this is the, all the slides that, that Carol and I have. Uh, we want to know what do you, what would you want to talk about? Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the, 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 the Q and A or ask to join, uh, join in. Uh, I did see that we got one question. Hey, David. Uh, uh, David, are you, are you trying to make things difficult to, uh, for us or are you just trying to help us? <laughs> uh, no, I, w I was hopping on to eventually reply to a head word who uh, ask, uh, asked a question on chat, but I yeah. saw that Gandalo beat me to it. Okay. Well, might as well for, 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 the, for the audio of it, for those people on podcasts, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> you could answer it. <laughs> yes, so, so Edward uh, Lucina uh, asked, uh, I read somewhere that the transition from the Ansible package to Ansible core package uh, will be smooth uh, and perceptible to the user. Um, there's no question mark, but I, I, I um, interpreted that as a question as to you know, how does it actually work uh, under the hood. Uh, so Galileo gave part of the answer. Um, um, the, the, way, the way that it worked is that back in Ansible 2.9, everything was in a singular package, right? Uh, if you went to github.com slash Ansible slash Ansible, you would have everything that was Ansible in this one uh, Git repo. Um, and so uh, in 2.10, we, we, uh, we, we, we changed that where the Ansible Git repo became Ansible core, uh, and then everything else was provided via collections. So the Ansible package from 2.10 uh, and above uh, provides just the collections. So you have Ansible core, uh, which, which provides the runtime, the command line interface, and so on. And then you have the Ansible package that adds all of these curated collections on top um, in order to provide the modules and plugins that you're used to. So if you upgrade from 2.9 to above, it should just work, you know, bearing any other, you know, breaking changes because, well, you know, life being what it is, uh, there are some breaking changes from time to time. Um, and th this is why, in fact, Tim was talking earlier about how we moved to semantic versioning. Um, and this, the semantic versioning is what is helping us, um, control the introduction of these breaking changes, right? So we have these, you know, 90 or so collections now in the package, um, and we are, um, we are keeping track of their versions and don't include uh, major releases such in such a way that they don't, um, you know, introduce breaking changes until the next major release. So uh, that's what we have in Civil 3, in Civil 4, in Civil 5, and eventually in Civil 6. Uh, so, you know, um, my best advice would be to, to uh, take a look at the porting guide that we have in the release announcements, amongst other places. Um, the porting guide uh, and, the, um, and the change log should contain all the information that you need uh, to hopefully, you know, make that as smooth as possible. Yep. The, the comment is phrased that as uh, transition from Ansible package to Ansible core. Is there, is that something different? If you just have core, you will still need to install the collection separately. Yes. So it, it depends on the use case, right? I mean, you could, you could install just Ansible core if that's all you need. And then perhaps even cherry pick, you know, some of, install some of the Ansible collections individually. Um, but if you go from the Ansible package and then only install Ansible core, you might end up missing some of those batteries that you were using in your, in your playbooks, right? 
Um, and so with that in mind, you know, you, you could continue installing the Ansible package or, you know, install those missing collections. So, so it looks like we have another question in the chat from David Duncan. Um, I can, hey Dave, uh, I can take that one. Yeah, that is that is something. The, the 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 so so sorry. I should repeat what David says for anyone not looking in. Um, David says moving to uh, 2.12 gave me a surprise, and the module shifted from community.aws to amazon.aws latest, and he wasn't expecting that. So one of the things that in um, separating out the content from the core engine in the form of collections is that we had to introduce namespacing uh, because it was very easy for someone to create a module in one collection that could uh, collide with another. So it necessitated namespacing. What happened then is we have all these different collections with their own namespace like community.aws and amazon.aws. Uh, what has happened in some cases, uh, when you see a, a community dot, you sure it's community supported uh, uh, work. Uh, Ansible as a, pr as a product, sorry, I know this is an open source community event, but as a product has created supported content. And sometimes we have to migrate the location of content that exists in the community into a different collection that is, uh, supported and not full, not just community supported, but but also supported by Red Hat. So that's what happened there is that we moved um, uh, modules that were in the community.aws into a supported collection, which was called amazon.aws. And that's, so one of the things that, uh, an unfortunate side effect of having to separate out the, 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 the content is that this namespacing can add a little bit of, I guess, I mean, complexity is the only other word that you have to track what namespace, uh, where you're getting a module from. And if that module moves to a different collection for some reason, um, um, then you'll have to update where you're pulling that from. So I think that answers quite and explains um, um, what David was talking about in, in the, uh, the chat. Yes, um, I, I, and I would add, Gundalo uh, replied also in chat. Um, we have to to try and uh, not break users when these kind of changes right. and move occur. We have a system of redirection in place. So maybe we missed the redirection. Maybe the redirection didn't work. Um, but we we do we do try our best to. Um, Ansible knows to follow these redirections across collections uh, if they're specified. Yeah. So, you know, um, if if you if you do point out the, the one module in the chat, I, I'm sure we could look if if we missed something, and we could, we could yeah. address it. it, it yeah, it's a great it, point. It's it's a bug. Oh right, okay, uh, David. So you said EC2 instance. I know. Uh, from working with that team, they um, they deprecated that module and created a new. Uh, I believe they created a new EC2 module. Now I'm getting confused. Which one was the original, and then which one was the new one? Uh, but I, I'm thinking that's possibly why. That's one of those rare cases where we we replaced the module rather than ported it. Um, this is a rare thing. I should have said that in, in what I said is we're trying to keep that th these type of situations to a minimum, but in the transition, there's a, a little bit more of that happening. I hope going forward, uh, I, I'm, I'm optimistic going forward. You're going to see a lot less of this type of situation. It's just a little bit of the of the the, the growing pains and going through the transition at that point. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for uh, that question and. Uh, your reply there, David. Um, are there any other questions? Or are you going to force Carol and I to just start? Uh, there is another question. There is another question in chat here from David uh, McShane. What's the most unusual device y'all have managed slash seen managed with Ansible? 
Ooh. Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, Gundalo says Phillips Hue lights. This is true. That's a good one, Gundalo. Yes. And we that was actually done in an Ansible Fest uh, event, I believe, or was it an Ansible Automates event by one of our engineers on stage live? He brought a whole Hughes light rig and automated it on stage. That was that one was out there. I was thinking of some of the uh, 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 a, a community member, Jeff Gearling has done a lot with Pi Pi and Pi Pi. Yeah, clusters. also people to mention the pies. Yeah, yeah. He, and he has he has it on his YouTube channel, so it's a Gearling guy. Um, that the, he's he's done. I'm thinking he's done some other interesting devices or or oddball Pi Pi devices that he created by hand for very specific purposes around his house. So um, th those are also um, ones that we see out there. And yes, yeah, this is something we should collect and highlight more. Maybe there'll be a whole new, uh, whole new section of the bullhorn there. <laughs> Odd <user. laughs> right, <laughs> unusual devices. I don't know if yeah, this is an go. unusual device, but um, when I used to work with the Manage IQ community, we had a st like a stack of um, Nooks, the the Intel Nook units, oh, yep. those uh, small com computers, and uh, you know we, we want to set up um, manage IQ and then uh, run off like um, Ovirt and with a you know some container cluster uh, with uh, OpenShift and things like that. So you know it's it's all quite complicated for me to set everything up, but luckily one of the engineers helped me with an Ansible playbook. So that I can just kind of run if if I need to, you know, re reset the setup to just run the playbook and have everything reset. So I can bring the demo, the, the the stack of nooks to another event for a demo. So not super unusual uh, devices, but you know something really useful. And I, I will look into the hue lights as well because we have hue lights at home, and maybe I could do something with it, that as well. Yeah, Jimmy sees your 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 person, Carol. <laughs> and I saw uh, you probably have to scroll back in the chat, everyone. But uh, uh, Gundalo posted a link uh, to the demo uh, and notes that that demo was done three years ago. So there might be uh, some porting that needs to happen since then. I, I don't think um, I don't think Jimmy's uh, can continue to maintain that demo. Um, yeah, one thing I want to point out that's related to that, and this is something when I, I talk to both users and I talk to customers, is I point out with Ansible, really, well, when, actually, when it comes to automation, any command line or, or UI click that you do is an opportunity to automate. That if you have those two things, there's a, pop, there's a very strong possibility that that's a, something that you could also automate. And uh, you know, if, if modules don't exist, we have lots of tutorials and a contribution guide to write your own modules that can interact with whatever it is uh, that that you're looking to automate, whether it's you know a, a TV or an oddball firewall from the 1970s. I think I just saw go rolling by, uh, you know, or uh, uh, um, some type of specialized uh, IoT device that if you have a you know command line tool for interacting with it, there's a chance you should be able to wrap it with an Ansible. With some Python code to make it an Ansible module, and then you can automate that. So, um, oh no, that's terrible, Gundalo. Some people that have uh, made modules that can only communicate with Telnet and expect. Uh, sorry, just seeing Telnet makes me <laughs> um, cringe a little bit, um, just because of how insecure it is. But hey, sometimes that's what you need to do because that's all your options are. So I get it. All right. Any other questions? Q and A. People that want to uh, make an appearance on camera. <laughs> what about those people who are new to Ansible? What What would you like yeah. to learn about? Great question. Yeah. Anything we can help get you started? Or guide you. I, I I was actually going to throw a question at at the community here. Um, I am an Ansible user of only a few years. Um, I use it mainly to automate, you know, setting up cloud instances and things like that. Um, 
And I find it challenging a lot of times when I'm kind of, you know, because I don't use it daily, I have to return to the documentation. So I go to like Ansible.com and I start searching around. And it oftentimes seems very challenging for me to find like a good example of how to do what I want. And I'm, and I'm curious um, if there's any thoughts in the community or maybe places that I'm not looking uh, that are good entryways for it's like, well, I just need to automate this thing. Like, how do I set up my project? Uh, how do I create my playbooks? You know, I, I guess like a really easy beginner's on-ramp to building these things. Um, I'm just curious if you have any thoughts about that. Um, we are actually looking to to have somebody help with um, perhaps like uh, demo videos or you know, just some something simple and straightforward with uh, you know concrete use cases and um, st steps that you do to you know like set something up or um, exactly what you said that you know some some examples that people can follow and not just because a lot of the time the documentation just tells what this module does and what that collection does but it doesn't really give you workable examples to 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 you know use to work with so we we it's something that we we want to uh, work on and uh yeah. definitely that's a great idea but in in the meantime you know we we try to share like i said in the bullhorn or uh, on twitter things that people have done and you know uh, they have examples of what they did or you know the challenges they faced and lessons learned and these are usually quite helpful as well to to see oh okay he actually tried this thing i was thinking of and you know this is what i could do so um if you subscribe to the bullhorn hopefully you can get some um ideas or some some content that might be you know um uh, up your alley if if not please if you uh, try something and and uh, have some experiences with it, with it uh, do a little video or or a short blog post and share that with the community that's always helpful yeah i mean uh, that that sounds really good and i think um and please forgive me if I butcher your name, but in, in chat here, uh, Onuralp says, my problem was in begin with folder structure when, when I'm reading it. Um, and, and I kind of struggled with a similar thing where I was like, well, how do I, you know, I understand how to run like a single command with Ansible and I'm starting to understand how to structure my playbook and like, you know, how do, how do I put these things together? So for me, it's really encouraging to hear that you're kind of working towards examples like that. I think, I think having a, having a little video or something that, you know, I, as a user who kind of struggle with this stuff, that, that would be tremendous. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we really need to think from a, like a, well, not, not necessarily brand new user, but you know, a lot of times when we are already so involved in the project, we mm. don't see the challenges that people, when they first encounter and spoke face. So right. right, right. And, and just to be clear, uh, the API level documentation for Ansible, I think is tremendous. I, you know, when I, you know, because usually what it is is I'll work on Ansible stuff a little bit and then I'll step away for it for a while, right? And, I, and I'll forget all this as it passes out of my memory cache or whatever. And so when I come back to it and I kind of wrap my head around it again, when I look at the API docs, I think they're fantastic. It, you know, it's an amazing level of detail there. So, I mean, kudos to the community on the, on the tremendous amount of documentation that's been built already. But I always seem to stumble over those first few steps whenever I come back to it. And that's great feedback, and, and thanks for that. That's something yeah, we can improve on for sure. Definitely. Uh, so we, we have so quite a lot of comments, yeah. <laughs> yep. Go ahead, Carol. Yes, uh, David Duncan asked, the community training was awesome last year. Are we doing it again? Yes, we want to continue the instruct uh, self-paced training and during our events, or you know, it's available also anytime. The links are in the slide. Um, Anything else we missed? We talked um, about the folder structure. Right. Um, yeah, and just just having something nice and clean, simple, beginner level stuff. Uh, I think we covered workshops, yes. Mm -hmm. Nice tip here from, from David about the, the graph option in the Ansible inventory in visualizing what your inventory looks like and how that hierarchy um, comes together or how Ansible sees the hierarchy of what, especially that's very helpful when you're pulling from multiple sources to, to create that 
um, single inventory or at least single inventory view. Um, is there yeah. a nice, more friendly UI for Ansible? I guess that uh, depends on what you consider uh, more friendly. Um, I know some people on their core team at, right now say, what's wrong with Bash? Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, there is there is AWX, uh, which is the uh, controller component of uh, the, the upstream uh, project that is the controller component in the Ansible platform. Uh, but that's geared more towards automation across an organization of people than a single user. Uh, for example, I'm trying to think of community projects that help um, you know, create a create a UI for Ansible that you could run locally. Carl, are you thinking of any, or or, or Kamala, David? Mm. Any of the other community team that they've seen out there? In the Q and A, there's a related question. I guess is there an alternative to Tower that I could use at home? There's. Well. Essentially, that that would be the uh, I, I think right. the AWS it, project, right? Right, which is the upstream to what was Tower. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone through a rebranding again. I don't want to get into product details and all, but the Tower branding has been retired uh, for various business reasons. So, but uh, you you want to look at a project called AWX, which is where our developers work. We're Red Hat, all about open source, so that's where the development happens, and then. They, they snapshot and harden um, AWX and, and bring it into the Ansible platform when we do builds. So um, that's, uh, that's probably what you're looking for. Yeah, uh, and in the comments, Ara is also mentioned. Ara records Ansible, ara.readthedocs.io, which you can take a look at, see if it fits your needs. It's mainly for recording and reporting. Uh, David, would you like to talk talk more about Ara? David from my team. Uh, <laughs> well, David's in the chat here. Yeah, right, exactly. Hello. Uh, Hello. I, ha I had to drop earlier. I got some technical difficulties. Uh, CPU spikes. Uh, you know how it is. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, I I, um, I do have a talk about Ara at FOSDEM next week, um, and not to do like two birds one stone kind of thing, but there will be a, a, a spoiler. Uh, there will be a demo where I spin up uh, an AWX instance on top of uh, a simple K3S uh, node. So um, that is suitable for running at home. Uh, it's not, you know. If you have like a, a home lab or something like that to manage your stuff, uh, it's something that you could you could stand up. I mean, I do it. I do it in the live demo within a few minutes, uh, so it's not it's not you know that complicated to stand up. Um, and so, uh, by all means, check check that talk out next week. Um, maybe it could help you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to, to, to add to that, uh, uh, Gundalo here put in, in the chat for anyone that's now following along that there, there is now a, a VS Code uh, plugin for those. It, it doesn't help you run Ansible locally, but it does give you, um, for, for those of you that are, are more interested or more comfortable in IDE, uh, particularly via VS Code, the ability to um, write your Ansible content uh just just it just makes it easier because it, it gives all all those extras that that you've come accustomed to in ide but for writing ansible content in there so uh the link the link is in the chat for those that want to try that out um another tool that i haven't seen mentioned um is ansible navigator so ansible navigator is is a new tool it's not I don't think it qualifies as a graphical user interface. It's a text no. UI, right? So, so within within, I think, 
Right. So within your shell or your terminal, you, you have this Ansible Navigator UI uh, where you can run playbooks, and it, it knows about uh, this relatively new concept of execution environments, which are container images where Ansible can run from. Um, so it, you know, if if you if you run Emacs and you have like your emails in your terminal and your you have your <laughs> your your IRC bouncer in your terminal and you you you, very, you love your terminal, Ansible Navigator you know might be very interesting to you. Yeah, that's a topic. Just for uh, FYI, uh, that's that is something I'll go into in my presentation tomorrow uh, with a with a little more depth and some slides <laughs> to to work from. Um, but that is definitely something to check out. It is, like they've said, it's it's a bit of a leap because it's getting into this thing called execution environments that we've introduced. Um, um, it's it's more related to AWX and you know scaling, dynamic scaling of doing large amounts of automation. But um, I think there is some potential there for what it can do for running Ansible locally and making development easier for individual developers. But that wasn't the, the main focus of that project out of the gate. Uh, but I think there's definitely some potential there for the community. So um, Yes, I, I've seen a, I've seen a workflow where uh, and sorry I had to cut my video video CPU spikes. <laughs> um, I, I've seen a workflow where people use the VS Code with uh, the VS Code Ansible plugin, and then they have like a terminal open at the bottom of VS Code, and then they have Ansible Navigator running on there. So it, it it's kind of like everything integrated. It's pretty nice, um, you know, yeah. if you're into that. Okay. Is there oh, any other time, Michael? Do we have the whole hour or? Uh, technically, you have about six more minutes. Okay. Okay. So cool. if anyone else wants to jump on camera, now's the time. Like, make your requests. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, if you're being shy, you need to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> We won't bite. <laughs> yes, we don't bite. Uh, here comes someone who's never shy. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Hello. Hi. Hi, Neil. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so you wanted someone to come up, and I was like, yeah, you know what? Why the heck not? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm super new to the whole Ansible thing. Like, I've I've only seriously started using Ansible. I don't know, five months ago. Okay. So, like, I I have very unhappily lived in the world of Puppet for like six years now, uh, and uh, it is a very interesting difference between Puppet and Ansible. I mean, I've I've used all of them: Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Salt, them all. But like it's it's a very interesting dichotomy, and I think I like the Ansible side of things a lot more than I have the puppet ones. But I also think that might mostly be because Ansible documentation is very good. So like props to y'all that the documentation for Ansible is very good, and I can actually understand what the heck I'm doing when I'm using something. But uh, I will say that one thing that that's been going on this. My time starting in Ansible has also been the most confusing because this big transition around Ansible has been happening at the same bloody time. And I have very little clue about what I am trying to what I'm supposed to be using or doing or whatever. Because like the world seems a little splintered between the uh, Ansible 2.9 classical one and yeah. whatever version the new one is, because like I've now heard Ansible 3, Ansible 5, Ansible 6, Ansible 212. I have no idea what is going on, and I am so very confused. You have to at attend Tim's talk tomorrow, where he will yes. go into the details <laughs> about what happened. Yes. The I, 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 but, but since you're here, I mean, I can try for a minute or two to explain that um, uh, for you, Neil. But yes, uh, Carol's true. That I, I do have a lot more slides that actually illustrate this. And I, I, I illustrate is. 
uh, you know, truly the word for it. Um, so, so the, 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 the quickest explanation I can give now, I understand and feel your pain. Um, it is, was an unfortunate, necessary thing that we had to go through. Uh, you know, I, I've been talking about this for a couple of years. Some, some people out there might've heard me speak about this. Um, you know, we, from the earliest days, everything was all in one package and it served Ansible really well and it made it really simple. Um, you didn't have to deal with the package manager and have, have compatibility problems. It's like whatever you had in there is what worked with the engine and it, life was good. The problem that we ran into is that the, the use cases and the growth of the number of modules that were out there were becoming so large that it was making it really hard to test and release Ansible anymore. It was starting to, you know, in a way, collapse under its own weight or become a victim of its own success. I think, as I mentioned, I think in the 2.9, we maybe breached 4,000 modules. You know, and you're, I mean, it's going across network and security and cloud and Windows and Linux and, you know, all, all sorts of things. Uh, and it was really slowing down releases and really, and, and someone plotted the growth curve of Ansible content and it was just going through the roof. So we had to make this difficult decision that we had to separate out content from the core engine. They're, they're just, there just wasn't a, much of an option anymore that we had to kind of rip the Band-Aid off and go out and do that. So that's what happened between 2.9 and 2.10. We, we started prepping in terms of engineering work in 2.7, and we did a preview in 2.8, and then 2.9 was the first one where you could use these things called collections, and collections are the ways that all, all this Ansible content can live separately from the engine. So that's that transition that unfortunately you've had to go through is that instead of having this one integrated thing, that now you have a core engine, which is the runtime, the handful of modules that really you can't do anything with the runtime without them. That, and that's the, that 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12 project, right? But then there's still that desire for people to have that, I install one thing and I get all this stuff. And that's what that Ansible community project was that uh, we talked about earlier. Here, I'll jump back to that slide. Um, and that they gave the, the we, we decided to give a different versioning scheme so that you can keep the two separate. So there's the core engine that everyone knew of, but now all the content's been removed out of that after 2.9. And then the 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 package everyone is used to installing is the Ansible community package, and that has versions like 3.00, 4.00, the current most stable release is 5.2.0, and uh, as Carol said very shortly, there's gonna be a 5.3.0 that simulates that pip install Ansible uh, package you used to get. Uh, that was, re we, we really obsessed over this and, and wrung our hands and trying to make this as as seamless a transition, but there's only so much you can do with that type of significant change in the packaging and even to a degree, the architecture of, of the um, application itself. So I don't know if that quite answers your question in the- It totally does. It yeah. totally does. But I'll, yeah. I'll attend your thing tomorrow. We'll yes, and please ask questions if I don't explain it well enough. Uh, like I said, uh, I, I have a bunch of slides and illustrations that, that explain that in a little more detail than what I just gave you. So, sure, and, sure. and if you would like to continue the conversation, uh, Michael uh, Botek has put a link into chat here to the work adventure experience where you can continue to have a, a little bit of a VR experience with the people in this discussion. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I'd like to say thank you, Carol and Tim. Uh, this has been a yeah. great session, lots of good conversation. Uh, thank you to everyone for coming out as well. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Thank, yeah, you, thank team, you, and thanks thank you, for Michael. everyone who, who joined us in yes. this session. Likewise. We'll see. Uh, Karen and I are going to hop over to work adventures. So right. Let's do that. see some of you there. Thanks all. Thank Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day, Conf.